Hello and welcome to our next episode of Catch Me Abroad and today is very special as we have one of our reciprocity students that came to UCSB last year. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome Joshua. Welcome Yo, Joshua. So hey. let's quickly talk about like what is a reciprocity student. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, Joshua, if I have this correct, you are from, um, you studied in Singapore or sorry, you're from Singapore, but then you studied in the UK, right? London. Yeah. London. Yeah. And then from London, you came to UCSB uh, as an exchange student. Um, yeah, so, um, like what you said, uh, I grew up in Singapore, but uh, I think I was really blessed to be able to study in London. But uh, I guess since young, I always wanted to, to try to get to California, not just because of the Hollywood movies, although those are pretty sick, but... Um, I guess I just wanted to see what it's like, meet the people from there, um, and it turned out pretty well. So I'm, I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. So going from that, I wanted to ask you what made you decide to come to UCSB? Because there are many other campuses that you could have came. So what appealed to you to choose UC Santa Barbara? Um, I think for me, so when I applied from from Kings, uh, they didn't really let me apply to a specific school. We could only uh, choose uh, University of California, and then from there they, they would assign us to a certain um, mm. institution in the UC system. Um, the thing about it was I had to choose between the UC and uh, I think it was called UNC University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Oh, um, okay. And although I guess um, my teacher was kind of like, oh, maybe uh, UNC will be more uh, academically rigorous and stuff. Um, as an exchange student, I think for me, the social and cultural aspect of the learning like kind of stood out. And I felt that in California, because of that, because of the people, just because of the vibrancy of the place, um, that's what made me choose it instead, like, just to come to California instead of North Carolina. A lot of places uh, that you go to in the world, it's, it's, it's just one culture or maybe one ethnicity that's dominant in the geographical area. I mean, California is so weird and it's really amazing how people from different backgrounds can come together. It, uh, I think it's just something that uh, made a lot of people how so many different uh, ethnic groups, cultures can come together and just do so well. I think that's amazing. So then cool. we're on that topic. Um, I want to know from your end, because you are a international student coming to our campus, a lot of our students here, we usually have that shock, culture shock of us going to another country. Mm -hmm. But on your end, I want to know more about how did you feel coming to California? Was there any struggles that you faced, any challenges that you had, you know, cultural adjustment stories, you know, things like that? Well, I think for me, um, uh, I think there's just two things. The first one would be, uh, coming out of the city because even though I am an international student, I've mostly only lived in cities. So coming to a, like a, a bit more like a suburb kind of area, seeing like um, there's wide open avenues, being kind of beach, seeing mountains, having to see that up front. Um, I think uh, that was really enriching, especially as a geography student, because you learn about these, um, but it's the first time you actually see them uh, up front and it's, it's a different learning experience, definitely. And a second thing in regards to culture shock, because um, I think uh, some misconceptions uh, can be that interna international students, if they're from this certain country, they're going to be this certain way. But actually, it's a whole, even within a certain country, the students are really different. Um, they have different backgrounds and everything. Um, and what I found uh, uh, how I found that I was able to connect with the people was uh, just to be honest with myself. So I'm only able to study abroad because of a scholarship. So um, I'm not, I can't live like a certain lifestyle, like um, eat at restaurants or like go to fancy places a lot. So that I was just being myself and like approach the people and being like, I'm um, sorry, do you know where to get cheap food or um, where the students like, like to go to eat cheap food and stuff. I, like. I found that I could really connect with the local people really well because these were like everyday students and these were things that they ask themselves every day, like um, where's like discounts with food vouchers and stuff. So when I was like being honest and being like just myself, I found that I could connect with the right group of people. And then from there, it's like 
it comes less of a cultural difference because like maybe um certain slangs that we use are a bit different but at the end of the day um it, like because it, oh, i must say there's this one interesting part like i would think to any international or local student that's going abroad to study um i think just being honest with yourself allows you to meet the people that you you get to meet and you get to be comfortable in that safe space it's a really humbling and amazing story to hear and i really like how you described how um coming to a new place you had to actually adapt and not just you know kind of go all out and spend but kind of figure out like what do locals here do you know like what does the average college student eat yeah, and like how do yeah. you get around you know so I actually wanted to bring up two things. So I noticed that you said that you are a geography major and that UCSB has a pretty good geography program. So what was it like to actually like bring your studies to a different country and like study in Santa Barbara? Um, and then also, um, how did you meet people? How did you get involved on campus? Oh, it's the geography in UCSB is so different. It's so amazing. Um, I think while overseas, because um, I'm, I'm a geography major, but I uh, specify more in uh, human geography. So that's my niche. Mm. Um, overseas is a bit more qualitative. Oh, oh, sorry. I mean, in London, it's a bit more qualitative. So they do a bit more like social science kind of aspect. But in UCSB, uh, it's a bit more high tech. So the, compu the computer labs and everything, uh, you guys have certain systems that we might not be used to. Uh, it's a bit more quantitative. So uh, I think in UCSD, uh, in terms of the technology, it's really enriching and it offered me a new way to study my discipline and really count like massive amounts of data sets with the, the computer system. So that was cool. Um, and then how did I get involved? Um, I don't know. I just went through the website and looked through like different societies and stuff. And I just saw, oh, I like to do dance. So I was if UCSD has any like dance societies. Um, there were a few cultural groups as well. And for like, I tried to go for like one event or something. And if I felt like, okay, maybe this isn't like the right fit for me, like it's totally cool. Like, um, it, it's, for me, I felt it was okay if I didn't immediately like click with a certain society. It's all about trying to understand where you fit in and trying out different things. And when you find something like you really enjoy or a group that is like really, like this doesn't a group that I was in. I thought, okay, this is the one that I just, just stuck through with that one. All right. And just a little translation for those listening in and watching. Um, when Joshua talks about societies, it's actually a British term we use, and it's for clubs and organizations. So when you hear society, that's what it's in reference to. So just wanted to get that out with my little jargon experience. Oh, nice. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. So oh, like, Carl, on, you that learned that cool. when you went to Bristol? I, I learned that when I went uh, to Bristol. I was in the history society. So that mm. sounds very posh, but it's not. That. I mean, it does sound like more like professional kind of like, yes. oh, I'm in a society. Like, <laughs> it does, not, yeah. You know, like <laughs> not a club or like an org, org as we call them, but like a society. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So um, you said that you had a chance to just, you know, show up oh. and just kind of meet people through activities and, you know, attending events. Uh, once you kind of got integrated to those societies or clubs, uh, how was it like making friends within that place? Like, did you find any, like, you know, trouble or any challenges with like, actually making mm -hmm. like close connections with people? Hmm. Um... Uh, I think I don't know I think like sometimes when you meet new people you just stand there in their circle and just like keep quiet and then that's when you know okay maybe this place isn't for me <laughs> but, but it's totally cool like you don't have to like um, tr don't try to have to like force yourself um, into, into groups and stuff I think um, for me the toughest part was just having to endure like awkward silences because you're pretty new mm -hmm. to the place but um, the best parts was when you've been there for the first few time. It's just been the first few minutes, but you find it to be a very comfortable environment um, for you, for the individual. And you guys just talk uh, normally, just keep sharing, okay, this might be a, a cool place to just um, stay in and then just keep attending the meetings and everything or whatever activities they have. So for me, um, yeah, I think, I think that was the toughest part, just having to and their awkward silences but other than that like it made it very clear like groups that i could just um be myself in uh, that made it very clear that those groups were pretty cool 
Um, and then besides that, I don't think there was okay. I don't think there was a language barrier because like um, I grew up with English, so there wasn't so much of language barrier. But I can understand that if you're coming from a different place and you can't speak English, it might be a bit tough. But I also know about how you know, the, in the clubs and organizations, it's so nice to uh, to accommodate people who who might not speak English, but want to be part and want to contribute to that to that group and organization, and they'll find means and ways for them to interact. So uh, I think there's there's still ways for for people to get involved. Yeah. Sweet, awesome, man. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the time frame that you were here. So, like, when did you arrive to UCSB? Like, what time of year? And then, you know, when did you have to leave? And we'll talk more about like the situation when you had to leave. But like, yeah. let us know like the time frame of what it was like. Yeah. <laughs> um, I came in September um, 2019. Yeah, that's right, 2019 and 2020. And then I had to leave in March 2020. Yeah, so I've spent about uh, two quarters, but I left at the, yeah, I spent about two quarters. So I left after the exam of the, was it? Spring quarter, winter quarter, maybe? winter no quarter. winter, winter. Yeah. Winter. So even yeah. within that two quarter time frame, yeah. so that, that's roughly about like six months or so. Mm -hmm. um, you were able to make friends and adjust and kind of feel the California lifestyle pretty well. Yeah, it was, which is very surprising. I think like what I said, it was really like the warm uh, environment that California brings that made it really really easy. Like even easier than when I transitioned to start studying in London. Mm. <laughs> like oh, I'm wow. being honest. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it, it's it's a distinctly like California yeah, thing for do me. Yeah. Do you think it was like the people, or do, was it sort of like the situation, kind of like how, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're an exchange student versus you are like a regular student at a u institution? Recall anything I did different when I started studying in London, as to when compared to when I came to California. Oh, one that that I do know is that Californians are like no, you guys don't say Californians, right? We say Californians. <laughs> yeah, we say Californians. In California yeah. are really really expressive. Mm. Okay, 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 cool. Yeah. Um, people in California are really expressive. Um, uh, they're really vocal and mm -hmm. um very inquisitive. Yeah, you guys, you guys are really expressive people, and that made it easier for 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 I don't know. It just made it made it easier for social life. I think in other places, um, it might be a bit more reserved or conserv conservative, or maybe a bit more, um, a bit more posh. Okay, my like London was a bit more posh, so you there, had to like act a certain way yeah. or like be a bit more professional, which was which was cool. But yeah, Nava is just the people in California. It's it's just in a very nice environment, and maybe the beaches help because like immediately when there's a beach, like people just want to chill. And, yeah. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, people yeah. say that about our school is that, you know, we're by the beach, so there's, we have to be laid back, you know, because how could, how could you be stressed out if, like, your backyard is the ocean, you know? That's true. Um, so, okay, let's, so talk, let's talk a little bit about um, how the situation was when you left, because we do know that it was a difficult time for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So just in case when... Mm -hmm people watch this later. So back in March of 2020, that was when the US, especially California, had been hit pretty hard with cases of coronavirus. So um, we decided to, first of all, um, change to remote instruction so that people just study from their homes. And as a result, a lot of our exchange students, like Joshua, had to return back to their home countries. So Joshua, from that experience, what was it like to you know, deal with that. It must have been very kind of shocking. Um, but how were you able to manage to just suddenly um, settle in somewhere and then pick up everything and settle back to your home country? Oh, I didn't really manage. I just, had to... <laughs> I don't think I managed, <laughs> but I just had to do it. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, okay, but I think uh, maybe, maybe two things. Like the first one was that um, I was just really sad because I made good friends. Um, I was living. I was living on DP, so I mean, it was an experience for me that, that I wouldn't forget. And having to suddenly leave that kind of uh, friendly, um, warm environment, uh, I think it was pretty tough. Uh, knowing, uh, knowing especially uh, the plans I've made for the rest of the quarter or the rest of the academic year. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty tough. It's not only like 
um, disconnect with people and, and then cut off my plans for the rest of the year. And then the second thing is that I know of a few exchange students who, who actually stayed on for the rest of the quarter, despite uh, changing to remote instruction. Um, but because of me, and um, this might apply to, to other um, exchange students as well, because um, I, I, I was tied to like a, a scholarship board. Um, they actually, um, okay, I'll put it as they asked me to come back, but it wasn't really asking, but I had to come back. Mm -hmm. to, to, I had to go back home. Um, so I didn't really have a choice to stay, and mm. it could be for other students as well. It might not be a scholarship board, but it might be their parents, or it might be something that happened back home that they had to attend to. So, um, I, I think, um, uh, yeah, it, it's it's just uh, not something that I will want to go through again. But hopefully, I feel that I hope that my friends back in um, California are doing well. Yeah, especially as what you mentioned, that the case is rising and everything. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm really sorry to hear that that had to happen and that, you know, you had to deal with deal with that in that sort of circumstance. Um, but once you returned home, what did you find any, I guess, challenges in that regard of coming back home? And when you returned home, like, what did you, what did you do? You know, suddenly your exchange had been cut short um were you able to do remote learning from home or what was that like um yeah yeah i i could i think it's just been good in the sense that it was really quick like how they set up remote instruction um uh, for students living abroad i think it was, it was just weird because you know when you talk to people you can bounce off really quick and it's like mm. informal it's mm. uh, face to face and that's like i love it and that's awesome but online i don't know I, I feel like there's a certain lag there's like when you talk to someone um it's a bit more filtered and it's a bit weirder i don't know and maybe i'm just not that kind of person i'm glad that i still got to meet maybe a few group project mates from my courses that we um maybe we had to work on a project and then we just met up by ourselves and then i just asked them a bit more about their backgrounds and they asked me about where i came from as well and yeah, so that kind of made up for the, uh, for me like, having to, to go back home. Other than that, I feel like, yeah, talk me like, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I think, well, I wanted to ask you too, since we were on the subject of your time at UCSB and with coronavirus, you know, we've mentioned about the differences between what you experienced here and then what you had to go when you went back home. So there is this, of course, uncertainty about study abroad and the ways in which coronavirus has been affecting. But for you, you've mentioned a lot about what international students should do. But is there any more advice you definitely want to give any student that is outside of our country considering to come over to UCSB that you want to give insight to them about? Mm, I think any advice. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a really fun time. I, I don't know how to put it. But yeah, you're coming to, to an institution that's in between the ocean and the mountains. And that's hard to find anywhere in the world. Um, and the beautiful thing that, although it's kind of like a suburb, it's not like a city, it's so diverse. And that's not a term that you would link to the suburb, uh, like a more rural area. Um, so be prepared that if you're uh, living abroad and wanting to study in, in New City, be prepared to have like one of the best times in your life where it's not just like naturally rich. The people are like so culture and socially rich as well. There's, there's so much you can take in, so much that you can learn from them. Uh, and just have an open mind. Uh, be open to trying new groups and organizations. But yeah, it's wow, it's, it's really fun. Yeah. That was a bad explanation, but yeah, it's just really fun. Like you won't regret it. No, I mean that that's that's fair. I mean sometimes it, what it boils down to is that the experience itself is just fun. You know, it's not just one particular thing about like school or friends or environment, but everything all together and all at once. Um, mm -hmm. It's a fun experience. Uh, so I think this is kind of important for people who are coming to UCSB because uh, you know it's a new country, it's a new school. Um, how are you going to adjust to campus? How are you going to learn uh, where things are? So 
Joshua, in your situation, were you able to receive any help from the Education Abroad Office or the uh, EAP Office? Yeah, um, you guys had like a website. I think before I came as well, um, the EAP Office actually sends a couple of emails to, to students coming in. Um, and those emails have links to different programs like the Global Ambassador Program or like groups and organizations. And you guys had like tea sessions as well, I think, like in, in the afternoon where everything has come together. Uh, so look out for those because in those emails with the different links, you can kind of identify like um, resources that you need help with. Um, and then uh, I think there was links to academic training as well. If you wanted to do an internship or work during your time at UCSB to just like contribute to, to the environment or just learn about working in the US. So those emails really helped, like especially when there was like the different resources so yeah, I got to be a bit more professional and learn how to do email stuff. So that was cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joshua, for joining us on this show. It's been really great talking to you, hearing about your experience, especially as a international student coming to our campus. And I'm sure that many of our listeners, both those wanting to go abroad and those from abroad coming to UCSB, would have loved to hear your insight and your wisdom about our program. Yeah, thanks guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you, are, you are really awesome. And uh, I think the EAP office does an amazing job of taking care of students coming in to, to UCSB. So thank you so much for everything that you guys do. Well, thank you, Josh, for having come into our community and to, you know, to share your thoughts and to spread the good message of you know, just going out there, being yourself, and being brave. So thank you, Joshua. <laughs>